Hey guys, Dr. Ben here. Welcome. I'm going to go over today just some thoughts, some research, some articles I've been reading, and uh, just get a, get an idea of where we're going. Where is this going to end? How is COVID going to end up? You know, they've been talking about uh, what's our what's our goalpost. What are we shooting for? And what's actually going on? I'm going to let you guys know what I'm seeing, uh, what I'm thinking, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing with patients, and things that you can do today. Things that you can do now, this year, next year the following year as this continues to evolve and continues to just fall into that seasonal upper respiratory infection that we are having out there. So love having you guys on all over the country, all over the world. We had a guy from Greece jumping on yesterday. Uh, lots of different people. Uh, lots of good information as well. And you guys are a great community. You've got information to share with each other, support each other, be positive, and we can really help change the health of this world together. So love having you guys on. Pop down below where you're watching from. Love to see that. We're going to give away a book today, so <clears throat> if you guys uh, share our post today, uh, Brittany will be picking one of you guys out and we'll be sending a book out to you, one of my two books, uh, Blood, Sugar, uh, Blood Sugar Does Not Lie and um, Rebuild Your Brain, Stop the Damage, Start the Repair. Uh, hey Sherry, great to see you in Virginia there, Doris in Nebraska. Doris, we're going to be out in uh, Sargent, Nebraska this week. We're going to be going on a on a bison hunt, so that will be fun up in the sand hills. So, um, all right, so here, here, let's get into it. And what are we actually seeing? The CDC has recently come out and said, you know what, our goal now is not to actually get to herd immunity. That's probably not going to happen. And we don't want to put that up there and then um, people are like, well, are we getting there or are we not? So they're pulling that back. And, uh, and basically they're saying that we're, herd immunity is no longer a thing. One of the biggest reasons is that uh, they're seeing the waning immunity that happens. And even, even within six months, it's almost gone. And they're seeing that uh, the ineffectiveness of stopping the spread. So yeah, that's the biggest thing. When you're talking about an effective vaccine, you've got to make sure that uh, it stays and it doesn't wane and it's going to stop the spread of, of the said disease. So those things are not happening. So the CDC just this past week came out and said, you know what, that's actually not our goalpost anymore. So let's pivot and just make it about, you know, trying to, to uh, get people up to, to where they need to be be um, and, and get them on their every six month uh, routine and uh, just like Israel and Australia have now said that the only way to qualify as being fully vaccinated is to have your shot within the last six months and when they go into lockdowns and and even Austria just did that where if you're not vaccinated you're going to be in lockdown um, so that's where this is going is that it's going into a booster uh, booster thought process where at least every six months um, we will we will be going down this path and needing to get another one another one another one um, and and if not and, and that also changes fatality rates, infection rates, and all that because if somebody had their shots in uh, in April or May now, you know they're basically uh, not not vaccinated. So uh, if somebody gets sick right now and they had their shot April twelfth, um, then once they change those standards, they would go as non-vaccinated. So then that would go into, oh, it's the unvaccinated that are, are getting sick and everything. So uh, it's just, again, you know, to wear a mask or not wear a mask and to you know dis distance or not distance, all these things. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of, of zig and zag and they just keep throwing different markers out there. So uh, what we know is that Israel and Australia are now saying if you haven't had it in six months, it doesn't count. So you're back to square one with what they're restricting people to do. The NBA following you know this lead and doing it in an earlier earlier time frame than the government and other people, they're saying that if somebody's had their J and J within uh, if it's been over two months, they have to get a booster, and if they've had their regular shots uh, over six months, they have to get a booster. Otherwise, they're having to do daily testing and and all of these other things. So the writing's on the wall. That's where this is going and for for a lot of people that kind of uh, said okay I'm gonna do this just to, to get my my little card and go from there 
unfortunately that's not going to matter because it's going to go into that that booster cycle and then people have to have to go down that path so you need to make that decision of um, whether you're okay doing that and going down that booster path or or not and so uh, unfortunately a lot of people they just jumped into it in January February March April May and at this point those are now uh, basically invalid and don't aren't going to count uh, count for one we know that the immunity is almost gone and two it's not going to count for events and and uh, gatherings and concerts and all of those things as well that is what's on the horizon is they're going to start saying well it's not just have you had your shots but when was it and so that's coming um you know it it's uh it's basically they're they're changing the the name from vaccinated to fully vaccinated and that's what you're going to be looking for um those those will be coming in um and we had a question. We have so many missing um, work from side effects of boosters. Suzette, yeah, uh, Suzette out in North Platte there. Um, yeah, there, it's interesting what's, what's going on through that. Um, so what, where are we going with this and what might be the end stage? What's, what's this going to look like? Well, we know that coronaviruses are seasonal upper respiratory infections. We've already seen this. It's going through um, different waves. We've had, what, three, four, five waves, depending on where you live. And... Um, uh, it's gone through and it's had its traditional two to two and a half month regardless of of uh, shots or no shots or masks or no masks or um, you know people social distancing or not social distancing none of those things have really mattered as far as the duration of this uh, of, of the the infections going through the masses so we know that it's going into a seasonal upper respiratory infection and um, it, it's evolving as well. And just like all viruses, just like the flu, flu virus every year, they don't usually hit it very good accuracy with the shot that they're coming out with. You know, the part that gets me is that um, you know, we know that it didn't do very well against the Delta variant. We know that there's more variants coming that as you get mass vaccination, the, uh, the viruses can evolve faster. And so we know that that's coming, but I haven't seen any, any research. And if you guys have pop it down below of anybody else still trying to come up with a better tool, a better vaccine, um, anything better than we, what we have right now, you know, that, that's fine. It, if it worked and, and was great and everybody would be fine and, and that's it, we never have to talk about it, that'd be fine. But that's not what we're seeing is that, um, you know, it's not working that great and yet they're all just satisfied and go, oh, hey, hey, we're good. Um, so we don't need to move on anymore, um, you know, at, with, with any more research there. Uh, hey, Sherry. Um, yeah, I, you know, I have not seen that um, on the on the antibodies. Um, I really haven't seen that on on uh, on patients, so I can't comment on that. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any research on that either. So. Um, so we know it's going to turn into a seasonal upper respiratory infection. This is probably something that's going to now just be part of our cycle. And uh, fortunately, a lot of people naturally have antibodies and T cells to this. Um, what we don't know is, you know, to the next variant or how this virus evolves, are those antibodies going to be enough? You know, what they probably will be enough is enough to uh, prevent somebody from getting really sick or going to the hospital, things like that. But it may be like the common cold or flu where, you know, even if you do have antibodies, you're still going to, if they're going to be different enough or whatever's going to happen that you're still going to be able to have that uh, infection every once in a while, but it won't be as intense intense as these have been the, the last few rounds here. So that's probably where this is going. And so again, it's going to turn into this seasonal thing. We're going to have to ultimately keep our bodies strong. And that's, that's the biggest point of this whole rambling that I'm doing today is that you've got to keep your body strong no matter what's coming at you, no matter whether you have had one shot or two or boosters or not you've got to keep your body strong because within a matter of a few months, you know, things are going down. And even, even if you've had the infection, there is a chance that you get it again and you just have to have to stay on, on track. You know, that 
probably this is not lifelong immunity, even if you've had the infection, just like a, a common cold, which are coronaviruses or the flu or those things, there's a very good chance that this keeps zigging and zagging and evolving that, uh, that we're going to be continually exposed and need to keep that body strong. So what, some of the things, you need to get your vitamin D over 50. That's where the research shows the sweet spot. Very unlikely to um, get, get COVID as bad, go to the hospital, go to the ICU, die, things like that. The research is showing vitamin D over 50. How do you know how much? You've got to test it and you've got to, you've got to check it after, after you're taking it for a while. You need to do exercise on a regular basis. Going for a walk is great. That's movement, but you've got to do some exercise. You've got to get your heart rate elevated. You've got to do muscle contraction. That does wonders for your immune system. Some HIIT, some HIIT exercises are great. Uh, you need to get that quality sleep. We talked about this earlier this week. You've got to be uh, in bed before 10 30 11 o'clock that gallbladder starts dumping and cleansing um, and what if vitamin D is 103 Jody that's a little bit high I would take whatever you're taking um, five days a week instead of seven so take off Saturday Sunday that that should help bring that down a little bit um, so sleep get to bed by 10 30 uh, you want to be up between five and seven and you want to be able to allow yourself to sleep through the night we've done tons of videos check our YouTube channel and you can um, search sleep and we've got tons of videos on sleep hygiene and on that note if you guys haven't um, signed up for our YouTube channel we've got all of our videos on there probably 500 videos that you can search way way easier and um, we put those up every day so if you if you subscribe to our YouTube channel you will see all of our videos that come up if you miss them on Facebook as well as you can go back and search them way way easier than on Facebook so um, Blood sugar, you've got to keep your blood sugar steady. You've got to keep it from spiking up and from crashing down. We know that every time that blood sugar spikes, it's going to cause uh, this immune system to not function as well as it should, decrease the effectiveness of that immune system, even upwards of four, six, eight hours afterwards. So you've got to keep that blood sugar as steady as possible if you're going to be around people. You know, that's probably one of the worst parts of like Christmas parties or whatever. You're around all these germs, whether it's COVID or flu or whatever, and then you're, you're getting exposed to that and your immune system down because you're drinking and you're having sugar and all those things and that blood sugar goes up so keep that blood sugar as steady as possible here's a tip for you guys for all of your Christmas parties coming up um, eat beforehand so uh, go ahead and grab uh, grab your bowl of cauliflower rice and some um, grass-fed beef meatballs and put on some spaghetti sauce on there, whatever whatever you want to see. Um, ideal A1C, Jody, uh, 5.1 to 5.3 is the ideal A1C. Um, and then eat that ahead of time. And then when you go to the party, you're not going to be that hungry. You know, maybe you'll have a couple little snacks or whatever, but instead of going there hungry and then you're eating kind of whatever they have, uh, eat ahead of time and that's going to make a big, big difference on there. So um, the, the inflammatory uh, foods and just inflammation in general, you've got to get that inflammation down. If you've got chronic inflammation in your body, your immune system is not going to function as well as it should. So you've got to go through that process of getting your inflammation down, getting it stabilized. Um, eating nutrient-dense foods. I haven't talked about this much lately, but foods that have lots of nutrients in them. Unfortunately, things like rice or grains or buckwheat or whatever it is don't have a lot of nutrients. It's got some fiber, um, it's got some calories, but those don't have a lot of nutrients. I always say, if you have the same amount of calories in rice or broccoli, you know, what's gonna have more, uh, more nutrients per calorie, that broccoli or that rice. So uh, as many um, fruits, veggies, good proteins, good fats as you possibly can, keep the grains to a minimum. They're basically fillers and they're not going to provide much nutritional value. Um, and then the last one, you've got to get outside. So uh, every Friday, I love to head up to the mountains and, and get outside, go for a hike, breathe, decompress, let the week go. Um, and are there some good recipes that you recommend looking up? Um, yeah, send us over a, a drip message. We can get, get you some uh, information on that, Cheryl. And, uh, and yeah, again, I keep it simple. What's today? Cauliflower rice, leftover little uh, tri-stip steak things, put avocado in, put some salsa on there, and 
that's my lunch. So um, it can be pretty darn simple. Um, some people like to be more creative and get, get more stuff like that, but um, we do have some recipes, some things that we can help with. So, but getting outside is huge. You guys have to be able to get outside. Uh, hey, Angela, nice to talk to you. Good to see you there. Um, and uh, Delise, uh, hi there as well. Um, so, you know, here's the deal, guys. We don't know how this is going to end. We don't know where it's going to, you know, is it COVID just going to go away at some point? Probably not. Um, but ultimately, it's probably here to stay. It's going to keep evolving. We know that the shots aren't going to provide the protection that they had hoped for. Um, we know that there's probably not some miracle thing coming out that's going to save everybody. So what do you got to do? You've got to take that personal responsibility right now, today, to take care of yourself and any dependents or anybody that relies on you, family, uh, spouses, whatever it is. You've got to take that personal responsibility. The government's not going to save you. There's no uh, local uh, county officials, health officials, whatever. Um, and nobody at Costco that's going to keep you healthy or keep you safe. You've got to do that yourself. You've got to take that uh, knowledge that you have. You've got to think, okay, this is where I am. I, I know the health status of my body and what is my risk tolerance and what does that mean? Well, some people, um, you know, even though they know that, uh, that they're working on their bodies, a lot of things, they still know they're a little bit depleted. So they're not going out as much and they're um, going to stay, uh, stay away from germs more than other people. And other people are like, you know what? I, I do a lot of good things and I think I can handle this. And that's kind of like what Aaron Rodgers did. Um, he just went for it and was like, you know what? I'm, I'm doing everything I possibly can and I'm going to be prepared in case this does happen. And you have to have your uh, your treatment protocols in place. You've got to have a game plan in place. If uh, you or a loved one does come down with whether that's COVID or anything else, you've got to be ready for that and, and got to be ready to deal with it and have a game plan and not just hope that you don't go to the hospital. So uh, take massive action today. This is your opportunity, your chance to be the healthiest you you can be. Um, I love talking to you guys, love having this information out there because you know, really you've got this potential inside of you to, to change, change the course of your life and those around you as well. Be that uh, motivating uh, force around you. Uh, motivate your friends, family, other people to get healthy. Don't talk to them about what they're doing with their, with their body as far as shots or masks or those things. Talk about what they're doing with their health. Talk about are they they doing the things day in and day out to keep their body as healthy as possible you're not going to change a lot of people's minds on those other things one way or the other you know so if you want people to get it or don't want people to get it I don't care about that I'm talking about inspire people to be healthy inspire people to take massive action in their lives so love having you guys on. Check out tomorrow, uh, 8.30 Mountain Standard Time, live Q&A. Bring your questions, uh, whatever it is. You know, we get some fun stuff. And, then, uh, and remember, always ask why. Take care, guys.